Hey guys, my name is Dave Martin, and what I want to do is take you guys through the process that I've gone through to convert this Freewing F14 twin 80mm EDF model into a turbine powered aircraft. Now, I've owned this aircraft for a couple of years and flown an EDF, and, and it's great, but uh, there's some shortfalls. One of those is flight times, which they're quite short at three and a half or four minutes, and also the number of batteries that it takes and you need to have to be able to have an enjoyable load flying is quite a significant cost and, and they need to be renewed every so often. Uh, so uh, I've actually got a couple of flights with this aircraft now in turbine uh, mode and I have to say that it is absolutely everything that you would have wanted for this F-14 model. Absolutely spectacular. Flight times are eight and a half, nine minutes. Um, Incredible vertical and also a fantastic sound out of the Zico X45 that I used for this conversion and in the unslug configuration. So what we're going to do is run you through uh, where I've placed all my equipment and uh, you'll be able to see that through the videos and also any of the cap holes or STLs that I've generated to do this conversion, I'll make available on a link down below. So without further ado, let's get this conversion started. Okay, so the first protocol obviously is uh, pull the EDFs and ESCs out, so um, this is just glued on, so we've removed that. I've pulled the ESCs out, um, I've taken the top cover off the wing to be able to get through to those, um, and I've taken the EDFs out. You can see here what I've done is I've actually taken a uh, chunk of fuse um, engine to sell out. Uh, that's this section here. Oh, sorry, the other way around. This is that section in there. And the reason I've done that is to get the fuel tanks in. So. Uh, my goal was to get um, over a litre into these into this aircraft, and you can see just in here, I've got a square 700ml tank. So I'll end up having 700ml in that nacelle, 700ml in this nacelle, uh, with a total of uh, 1.4 litres, which is absolutely plenty for this aircraft. That should give me over 10 minutes of flight time. Um, uh, but I'll probably also, uh, after test, flight tests, decide whether we fill the tanks fully, because that's a lot of fuel to um, take off as well. with. The other nice thing will be that I'll be able to look up the inlet and uh, be able to check how much fuel I've got remaining through there. So that's the first port of call, is to cut that, uh, that uh, section open so you can actually fit the tank in. Um, as you can see, I haven't done this side yet. Um, I'm just gonna come along, cut that, remove this vent so I get a bit of better access and I'll show you guys how the fuel tank goes in. So the tanks I'm going to use for these are these uh, 700 mil uh, fuel tanks. I did try to fit a 500 mil tank in; it'll come in all the way uh, to the very front, which is uh, great. Uh, but it get me about a liter, and I really wanted to be a little bit um, more than a liter on board for fuel wise. I wanted really the 1.2 mark. So these one point, uh, these 700 mils, 1.7 liters all together. Um, they're a great tank. So I've already got the one installed on the left hand side. Uh, Work this one up. The other thing I'll always do is also give these a little bit of a, a tighten up just to make sure they're nice and tight. Um, and the same with this, make sure that the airing is installed correctly. Looks pretty good. We tighten them up. Um, and I'll tighten these up in a second. Um, when they get installed, they go head down, you'll find that these actually catch on the foam as they get up into the, um, the top section of the um, nacelle. Uh, the center of gravity point is roughly about here. Um, with because of these nipples, that you, this is about the closest that you get onto the center of gravity, but that's pretty close. That's not too bad. You shouldn't feel too much of a CFG shift uh, as you'll be burning that fuel off uh, in the flight. Um, and I'll also end up having a header tank that'll sit up here, which will offset some of that weight of the fuel as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and tighten these up, uh, and I'll start to make some grooves to allow um, the um, refuel and the vent line to come in that little bit further um, and allow me to get into the same. Uh, position is the one that's in the um, left hand side one already. All right, I'll pick up. Okay, so I've cleared out the swarf and what was left of the foam. The next step I need to do is actually get a way to get from the nacelles into the center section to pass the fuel lines. So using um, my brass tube that I heated before this time, I'm just gonna use it cold. Um, and you can see I've made a hole from this section uh, all the way through into the nacelle area. So I'll just make another one on this side. And then um, what we can do is run the fuel lines and uh, start to get the length of the fuel lines right to get the fuel tanks in. 
Okay, after the last video, I uh, cut the pipe, uh, the fuel tube, sorry. Um, I actually came back and cleaned everything up as I didn't have my uh, tube cutter with me at the time of the video. But I've uh, installed the pipe. I um, machined up a few blanks uh, for the fill ports because I'll be filling through the UAT. Uh, so everything's been lock wired up and it's been ready to be installed. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just use a pull uh, string through the back uh, to feed the cables up and um, I'll, um, Put the camera back on once the fuel tanks are back into their final position and the fuel line's been threaded through. Okay, we're back. So you can see here, uh, I've run the fuel lines into the uh, center section where the UAT is going to end up sitting. Um, you can see the tanks are now installed in each of the engine cells and ready to go. So before I continue putting the UAT and whatnot on inside the aircraft, what I'm gonna do is actually install the turbine mount on the back, um, so that that way I get an understanding of how much weight I've got the back of the aircraft and where I need to position things in the front to minimize any unnecessary weight. So I'll just flip the model over and um, I'll show you what I'm doing with the engine mount. Right, so I flipped the model over. Um, what I've done here is, uh, you can see I've uh, drawn in CAD a 3D printed turbine mount, um, and that's um, designed to fit in the back here. So where I'm gonna, where it's gonna end up living is right here. Um, unfortunately, I had to cut away the tail hook and the tail hook bracket, the foam, and I say unfortunately, because I used to have a retractable tail hook, so I've actually land with it and um, drag it on the ground, just to look fantastic, but turbine in the way now. So that's gotta go. Um, this is where the turbine's going to sit. I've got a 3D printed um, X45 dummy that I use uh, when I'm setting up the aircraft. Um, and you can see the angles that I've set here. Um, I'll show you in a video later on uh, how, I, how I went about getting that angle. Um, but this is the location. So before I epoxy that down, um, I've, I've scuffed this up already. Um, but I've removed the paint from the kit in this area. Uh, these, the earlier you go in the free wing, the, the less well adhered the paint is to the foam. Um, so you don't want to epoxy onto that because obviously you're just going to tear the foam away down the line. Uh, so remove the foam, just use some masking tape and just tack it away. I marked out where it's going to sit and, and remove that. Um, your kit probably shouldn't have this hole, that's where the server used to sit for the retractable tail hook. Um, so now I can go ahead and um, epoxy that into place, it's ready to go. Um, and what I'm going to also do is have some small plywood plates that will feed into the side of the nacelles and that'll make that a super strong mount for the turbine. The only thing I have to do is uh, the turbine does just touch the foam here. I was trying to reduce the height as much as I could. A, so that you couldn't see the turbine from the side and also protected it if you drag this tail, um, which these probably will do anyway. Um, but uh, also, yeah, I just wanted to bring it into the center as much as I could. So um, I'll also just take the model out quickly and um, using a sanding drum on a drill, just take some material out of here just to be able to let that, that turbine sit in very neatly in there. Um, you can actually also, I don't know if you can make it out, but just in here you can see the back of the fuel tanks. So I haven't installed the, the vents yet. Um, I'm just deciding what I'm gonna do there with that. Um, I'm gonna be installing some sandline center burners um, on 3D printed mounts in the back, um, which I'll be able to get access through the EDF hatches. Um, but whether I want air coming in there or not yet, or how much air I want coming in, I don't know yet. So we'll, um, we'll keep going along and we'll see how that pans out. Okay, so the engine mount is glued down, and next thing I'm gonna do is I, I like to put a uh, pipe plate on the top of these mounts. A, so the screw's got some meat, something to hold onto properly, and B, what this is doing is actually tying the engine mount to the engine nacelles. So, uh, considering the way this is laid coming off the 3D printer, and the fact that it's a shear joint with epoxy, I wouldn't like to put forward an aft load in this direction alone. Uh, so what this does is it helps transition some of those forces into the nacelles. Um, this gives you some strength, some meat to screw into, which makes attaching the turbine a lot easier. Um, and as you can see in the structure here, we end up with a really strong box section. Um, that's going to be bulletproof. Um, I reckon you'll probably hang six kilos of this and not have too much of a drama. So what we're going to do next is actually uh, prepare the slots into the side of the fuselage. Um, so you can see this one's slotted in, it's waiting for epoxy. Um, so I'll show you how I, I did that. 
um, and then we'll uh, epoxy these in, which will allow us to bolt the turbine in, uh, which is the next big step, because once we, we can manage to get that done, we can run the lines forward, and we get an idea of roughly weight-wise what we've got at the back of the aircraft, and that allows us to position uh, the UAT and the batteries and everything in the front of the aircraft in the most optimum position for our final flying uh, setup. So I'll just show you how I did uh, this. Um, what I did was I just grabbed a, this is my other mount, just pop that here for now. Um, I just grabbed a blade, um, and what I do here is I'm gonna just use the engine mount to cut at the right height to give me a nice clean slot. You know, if you are gonna try this at home, be super careful. If you don't have the uh, dexterity, probably do it another way. Um, this, I like doing it this way because it's gonna give me a very accurate cut exactly where I need it to go on the model. So I'll just push the blade along. And then to get the, up, the other side of that cut, I'll just put the engine mount on there at the moment. That will give me the correct spacing. Just run that blade through. That's the beauty of foam. Use a nice fresh blade. And foam just works so easy to work with. It just works out so well. Just come this way, get more depth on this side. And then once we've done that, you can use the mount here to push that foam in, start to compress it. As so we push it in, so that goes this way. There we go. The plates are perfectly aligned, bit of epoxy top and bottom, a bit of epoxy in the nacelles, and that will be just meant for the turbine to mount onto. There we go. So I'll epoxy these in and I'll come back as we start to look at mounting the turbine. Okay, the mounts are now dry, so it's uh, time to install the turbine. So I'm just gonna uh, use the actual turbine for doing the alignment. Make sure I'm in the middle of the gap. The turbine looks straight and I'll just do a quick little pilot. Okay, uh, what we're up to now is the uh, fuel system is mostly installed. So um, our air trap is there, we've got the fuel filter. The pump is still loose, um, but uh, I've uh, 3D printed a bracket so I can bolt that down and that'll hold the, the pump in situ. Um, you don't need a lot of force, but that clips in quite nicely. Um, and the only other thing left not connected at the moment is the tank venting system. Uh, for that I've turned up um, a vent in the lathe. Um, and the reason behind that is it's, it's quite a long hole through here. Uh, and I wanted to read the vent sitting further forward for two reasons. One, especially with short squat aeroplanes, if your fuel vent's down the bottom here, it's really hard to see when you're refueling the aeroplane. So I want to put this one nice, nice and forward so I can um, see that when I'm refueling. And also, I'll uh, have a clear line coming up so I can just look from the top and I can see when it starts to vent out to the overflow. Uh, so they're the last two bits of the fuel, just uh, installing that and installing the vent are the last two things of the fuel system left to go on. Um, and then once we've done that, we can move on to installing all the, uh, the radio gear. Um, I started with a, a board. You can see I've actually taken a lead from the factory mounts. So this will sit in here um, and that'll allow the, uh, the receiver to sit in there. And then I'll, I'll also put um, the power box switch in there as well. Um, and uh, hopefully we can get that uh, sorted out tonight. I'm umming and ahhing, I might actually try and level the receiver entirely. This is uh, one of the um, AS3X gyro stabilized receivers. Um, and I know the instructions say don't use it on turbine models, uh, but I've got a couple of guys I know who've been using them on X45 powered foamies and they haven't had any dramas. So we can always turn it off in flight. Uh, this is the receiver I had in the aircraft anyway, uh, pre-conversion to turbine, so that's what we're just gonna go with. So, uh, okay, as we keep with the installation, you can see here that there's a 3D printed board for the uh, power box switch, and I'm also running uh, one of the Spectrum AR 10360Ts. Um, this board actually ties into the original um, mounts in the, that the factory has for the battery, so you can see there's uh, slots in the, the, the key up with these tabs that come from the factory. 
Uh, so I'll, fuel system installation is now complete at this stage. So I'll uh, drop this board in and I'll tidy up the antennas and the satellites. And uh, once we've done that, we can actually look at uh, placement of the batteries and keep going with the uh, installation. The last piece I made and I ran out of time to video was this additional FOD screen for the turbine. It's got a 3D printed frame and I uh, attach it to the EDF uh, covers uh, which allows easy access to the turbine.